Welcome to Cooking the Beat. We've got Mr. Dave Lawrence here. Thank you, Dave, for letting us come over. Good day. It's nice to have you in my kitchen. Yeah, it's great. What are you cooking today, buddy? Um, we're going to have spaghetti alla puttanesca. Cool. I've just come back from some time in Italy with my family. Um, we're not Italian, but um, my mum and my son both doing it, studying it at the present. So we're going to put a whack of white wine in the sauce. So I'll get you to pour those, a couple of those in just a second. Sure. Firstly, we'll just take up a bit of olive oil. Excellent. Get it properly hot before we chuck. Onions it out in there. Great stuff. So th I've been slowly cooking this dish over decades, you know, old bachelor house, student house kind of classic. Yeah. Tuna, tuna pasta. Feed the masses. But uh, I developed to the point where I was living in Spain, my housemate had some Italian friends staying and they're like, oh, you're cooking puttanesca. I was like, I am. <laughs> so yeah, it's not, it's not for any kind of recipe. No, nah, there's best recipes, mate, your own recipes. Just slowly work out the kinks in it and pick up the odd little hint from the gazillions of cooking shows that are on the box these days. Yeah, well, it's hopefully we will end up too with a bit of luck. <laughs> so this is a pretty big event, first episode. We're pretty excited, all the teams. It's are, we first, are we the first cat off the ramp? We are, we are, Dave. Yeah, it's great to get around the door and finally catch up for a jam. So be a bit we've, we've had a good jam already uh, to, uh, to tape. Yep, looking forward to hearing that back. But basically, a whole onion, a whole, I like to use a yellow cap. It's nice and sweet. It's a nice looking colour with the red yeah. sauce. Oh, it looks great. And who inspired you with your cooking, bud? My mum studied Italian at uni and lived there for a while before. Yep. Uh, I, was, I came along. So she's always been something in the Italophile, which is uh, a lucky thing for a young fella. But I did spend a fair bit of time at home on my own as a teen because uh, only only child, single mum, that kind of thing. She was busy yep. at work all the time, so I'd come home and cook meals for myself sometimes. I remember getting a pretty mean hamburger recipe going when I was a teenager. <laughs> I made hamburgers pretty, hamburger. uh, well, pretty good. Well, today it's International Pasta Day, I believe. Is it really? Well, yep, so. I'm going to you know, be a philistine and just cook some, some dry pasta. To it. No, it's all good. Okay, so we'll whack the... That oil should be hot enough to hear it a bit as it hits the pan now, so it's just... Just there, sizzling. Capsicum and the onion. Just gonna cook it through and brown it off a little. In terms of your music, Dave, who inspired you? I found out much later on that my um, my grandfather was typical Irish Catholic, West Australian family. He was one of eleven kids, I believe, out wow. in the Northern Way. Um, he was born in 1919, uh, and there was no, being the eighth head of 11, he wasn't getting into land, so uh, <laughs> he did primary school and then he came down to Perth, the butcher's apprentice. Oh, cool. Uh, for some of his days, and then uh, when the war broke out, he had one bad eye from a farming accident when he was a kid, so he uh, didn't see active service. Most of the war he was a drill sergeant, so he was yeah. training poor recruits as they got recruited to the army. Oh, out that kind of thing. Interesting. Uh, but one of his uh, uncles, I believe, was a, had a swing band in Perth in the, 30s that he used to go and see around the city. Yeah. So he was always keen on the idea of music, and he named my mum Carmen after the opera. Ah, yep. Because yep. he was an opera buff. I, I did a little study of classical music when I was a kid, and I was more interested in surfing and footy and running around yeah. outside and that kind of thing. So I wasn't a great student in terms of just a bit of paprika in there is nice, just a little shake, not a huge amount. I think you get into. I'd learned a bit of classical and a bit of, you know, blues playing on the on the piano with a teacher. It was pretty fun when I was about 12. And then a couple of years later when the hormones kicked in, <laughs> the Blues Brothers movie turned me on to a lot of great stuff. It was part of the big blues revival too. Yeah, yeah. John Lee Hooker, I was in 78 Records with Mum sometime shortly after seeing that, age about 13. And uh, she gave me 20 bucks to go and get myself a, 
record of my own choice. Whole Good red stuff. chili, all the seeds, and then no when I muck around. Cooking it for kids or something like that. The, the seeds will give a lot of the heat from a chili, so yep. you can still use some of the flesh. Let's take out the seeds, but we're going all in. Yeah. I'm keeping the garlic out of the pan as well for the first couple of minutes, just so we don't get that burnt garlic flavour through there. But yep. It's no good in the sauce. Rip off. Looking a little bit dry, maybe a bit more oil. Oh, it smells good. I can smell the onion. <laughs> Watching the crew's face, it's like, yum. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the, just the right mode to cook this because I haven't had lunch and I'm hungry, so I'm yeah. going to try and keep it on the rails and make it worth eating. Yeah, that's it. No, it's, it's always good to cook when you're hungry. It's a bit of an inspiration. So, yeah, I first started playing um, piano in bands, actually, because I'd oh, done cool. study with piano as a kid and I could pick out a bit of blues in the piano. So I played in a band with Mike Videlli um, yeah, right. as teens. Lovely. We ended up doing duos at the Broadway Tavern. I think we we're both still underage, but <laughs> Mike's dad, Basil, helped me buy a Fender Rhodes piano from Cosmic. Oh, nice. For, I think 400 bucks at something at the time. 1988, wow. I got it. Still got it in the studio in there. Nice. I was lugging it around to Mr. and Sunbird for a while, but uh, lifting that thing on your own is not a, you need a, road. a great experience. <laughs> so you talk about your music now, Dave. You're obviously you're still doing Mr. and Sunbird. Yep. Yeah, we're, we're happily uh, still doing it, all in our 40s now with, with children and that kind of thing. We're not as uh, hard at the pump as we were when we first started out, I guess. Yeah. We went to Europe a couple of times. That's and right, you guys played in yeah, Europe, those Europe tours, I remember saying played, played quite a lot. These days, obviously, we've got home base at Rodney's Bait and Tackle. It's got his yeah. uh, wonderful creation there. And we're stepping up. I think we're doing Mojo's on Sunday, and we're doing uh, a month of Fridays at Clancy through November. Oh, nice. That's probably old news by the time this is in the air. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. So, just got the veggies, the, the capsicum and the onion, and mm. now the garlic. Getting into that oil, a bit of paprika. Some lovely colour there. Good start. That one. So Dave, yeah, obviously there. politics is pretty big to you and you're... Having a bit of an insight into the way all the mechanics work and... Yeah. Feeling for how the electoral system relates to the media and the society and stuff. It could be quite painful to be kind of locked into it, but um, being a bit su surprised when I heard someone use the term to describe themselves media junkie in, back in mm. the 90s, you know. But I think everybody is to some extent these days. So yeah, absolutely. I can't help keeping up with it and shouting at the TV. I have to explain that to Henry sometimes. <laughs> The you've TV. got to maintain yeah. a, a bit of healthy disengagement from things to maintain your mental health these oh, days. I think, I think so. And that's where music's a big thing for me. Yeah, for, absolutely. For me, it's, it's therapy first and foremost. I've, yep, no, it's just having a, having a crack and having a play is always a good thing on your strum. Helps keep me on the sunny side, for sure. And highly recommend it to anyone else. It's good, for, your, it's good for the health of your brain as well with the ageing population and Alzheimer's and dementia becoming a thing, being yeah. actively musical. Yeah, well, well, saves from that stuff, as well as being actively bilingual. I'm just going to be careful we don't burn that and just get the next little phase ready. This is it what about the way? It smells good. I think I'll burn this off one of the SBS. If you're going to use some tomato paste in a tomato sauce, a couple of tablespoons there. Um, it goes well to reduce it and even caramelise it a little bit. At this Ooh. point, instead of just chucking it in once you've already got the, got the sauce wet with a tin of tomatoes or whatever. Yep, cool. That'll bring the flavour. Well, there's a hint there. Through, in terms of hints gleaned over years of improving a sauce. Perth's always been quite um, friendly and welcoming between bands and promoters and venues, and it's not too cutthroat and cliquey and I don't find that genres don't sort of dominate here as much as they yeah. do in some other big cities. And so. that's a good thing, isn't it? I think if we all work together it's all easier, isn't it? We all had to start somewhere and going through that first phase of getting gigs and promoting your band and um, that's really important. I remember the jazz singer Kurt Elling when he was here telling something about he's from Chicago and he said it was a much warmer sort of scene, you know, well, that's rent good. parties and that kind of thing, people shorten their rent and they have a house concert and just leave a jar by the door and people would <laughs> donate to the rent, you know. They say that wouldn't happen in New York. New York people <laughs> would be like, oh, someone's always about to you know, fall on the bones of his ass. Like, well, good, that'll be one less <laughs> for the competition. There's not, not the competition. So a, I think Perth's more like Chicago than New York, if yeah, that makes any sense. Thing. And I think the aim of, one of the aims of this show is just to help promote Perth music and um, 
get out and talk to people about what they're cooking and and um, about their music, which is really good. This good, so once that um, tomato paste is reduced down a bit, probably a good whack of white wine on this thing. Oh, nice. And we're good. just going to turn that back up a little bit now and let that reduce a bit. Dave, with your music, did you have one of your songs at this point, on a Australian movie, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. That was uh, one of the benefits of time spent in Sydney. It might not have had a great um, grassroots music scene at the time. Double J had become Triple J and gone national, so they lost a sort of plank in the scene cheers, there. Mate. And cheers. Pokies, cheers, killed a lot of the band rooms, but did have sort of Corporate HQ and the singer in Fondor at the time had just graduated from Whopper and I knew all the NIDA kids. So um, nice. I, I used to play at a, on Sunday sessions at a place called um, the Old Fitz down in Willamaloods, down the hill from the cross. And cool. it was a, um, had the theatre out the back. Oh, a lot lovely. Of independent Australian theatre went down there. So that sounds great. This a bloke was called nice. uh, Josh Lawson, who um, we used to know from that little social world, Yep. gave me a call from. Los Angeles when I was at work at EWA about five years ago and said, oh, remember that tune of yours I used to love at the pub? Have you got a recording of it? And yeah. So one time I paid a fancy producer and <laughs> done a whole thing, the session music I was a few years earlier. So I was like, actually, I do. Oh, good work. And it's like, well, I want to stick it in my feature film. Yeah, I remember hearing that. So that was, a, was that an EP you released? Lush Like You, yeah. That was at Sunbird, before Mr. and Sunbird. Yeah, that was great. That was, a, that was a very, very pleasant surprise. It sort of, you know, didn't pay for the house or anything, the independent beach film budget, but uh, it was exhilarating to sit. They played it over the closing credits of the film. That's fantastic. The Little Death, the film's called. Um, it's a sort of comedy in when I was on four. But that would have been great being in the cinema watching and thinking, that's my music, yeah! <laughs> I kept not, be not believing it was real, and there was another song in between the last scene, and then you know, some of the credits had started rolling, and I was like, when? When? Oh, he didn't end up using it and he couldn't bear to tell me. Oh, that he tricked me. It finally rolls in. And, oh. and then you go back to, oh, the guitar's a bit out of time in the chorus or a bit, you know, something that bit a bit out of tune. <laughs> it's funny watching that, the film get released around the world and you get yeah. a little dot of Spotify revenue. Is it, was it much? Not really? No, no. It was just that geographically you could see it happening. Right? Yeah, well, that's... that's three, three cents in... Bulgaria, five cents in Sweden. Well, at least someone in Bulgaria got to listen to your music. That's got to be exciting, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. Just the, the, the thought that it's getting out there is, uh, yeah, oh, is, ma is magic. You know? That's cool. I long ago gave up on any dreams of, you know, um, Being a millionaire for massive music. exposure to your music or whatever, but knowing that some people have enjoyed it and yeah. other musicians who said that it's, you know, made them think about something a different way or helped them along. Absolutely. The reward is, yeah, I, I, I try and keep it simply in my mind. My only goal with music is to still be playing on the porch when I'm 85. I think we all want to be. Just to, just to not stop playing. Because yeah. I know a lot of people do. It's hard to keep your hand in. And actually keep be. Keep a room full of instruments. And <laughs> physically be able to do it too. Like, that's one thing about the harmonica. I should be able to do that when I'm 80. It's like you don't need too much coordination. I've gone back to playing cricket because my son's so into it. Yeah. But, uh, um, yeah, I, I live in fear of damaging my hands. I got hit in the wrist by a cricket ball at training last night. <laughs> I've got a couple of gigs on. Ball on a bit slower, Henry. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Now, Fantastic. let's see what's going on over Sorry, here. Yeah. No, no, it's, uh, it's in a, just a sort of holding pattern. So I was lucky. So another, what you need to do when you're cooking pasta is cook the pasta as well. Um, the basics of cooking pasta are lots of water. And I've been worded up recently that um, I need to put more salt. Is this something you picked up in? In the water. Or you overseas? No, Italian friend here told me off for not putting enough cool. salt in the past. Or putting it in um, before the water's boiled and apparently the salt just evaporates straight back out of it. Okay. So boil the water, then put the pasta in the salt in. Okay. I like to put a little um, dash of oil in the water as well. Yeah, is that to stop it clean? To stop it sticking. That's an, another trick with, with sauces. No, you're not so much this one. Um, is a couple of scoops of the pasta water in the sauce at the yep. end provides a little gloss to it. I was lucky enough to be at the Mr. and Sunbird launch. The what was it the anatomy of Mr. and Sunbird? That was it. The second CD you guys did. That's a set. Yeah, we, we've made two double albums. As it's a double band, as it were. It's got his singing and writing all his tunes as well as all mine. So that was a good launch. Well, it's a few years ago yeah, now. Yeah. What was that? I'm getting itchy to, to do another record. Yeah, that's good. 
We're playing Mojo's this Sunday night as well, which is another classic venue. I mean, yeah. That's one thing that's done Perth well, is venues surviving. Yep, it well, is. New ones popping up to replace old ones, because that's, that's what happened to Sydney. Poke machines. Took in, over. All the great rock venues in the inner city, the pubs ended up with poker machines in those rooms. Well, it's probably good we don't have pogies over here. That's one we... it, It's a good thing that the state government's managed to hold out against that, uh, the pull of a big revenue stream that they're yeah, passing good. up by not having They could have got greedy, but they didn't. The gaming good. lobby's very, very powerful in, yeah, in the East. Money and, talks. Uh, so there's not really many political you know, opponents with that much clout. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so cool. it's, it's a hard thing. So, yeah, yay, yay Perth. Venue's a, a big part of the equation of having a good music scene. Absolutely. So in terms of Perth music, Dave, what can Perth musos do to get more people out to gigs these days? You've, you got, you've got to be on the front foot about um, promoting your shows yep. yourself. Definitely. Let's turn that right down now because that's come down. We don't want it to stick, but it's nice to have it be nice and thick. So in terms of you talked about social media and and just general promotion. Social media, word of mouth. We do a house concert at my mum's place in oh, North, no, North Freo every um, I'm always away summer. I want to come. That, the that, curse of the FIFO worker, eh? Yes, the curse of the FIFO worker, but one and year I'll get there. Short social media, and you know, it, it annoys me when Facebook, when you have to, you can't just make a blanket list and invite them to each event you do. You've got to, every invite to an event, on Facebook, you've got to separately do, and they obviously do that to keep spam down. Yeah, I suppose. People don't want their inbox to just be full of invites to things they've got no interest in. Yeah, yeah. And that's what sort of MySpace turned into, I guess. Yeah, yeah. The they, they, they seem to be want to step around that. But even personalising things is good for me. Don't forget Ooh. about the media that's still there, like radio, promote your gig on, on the RTR and yep. in the sort of street press such as that and those days. And new radio mush uh, when it well. comes out too. Absolutely. But then also, <laughs> mum, mum, gets a, plug. mum gets a, radi <laughs> a, a radically good response from sending out um, individual emails to people inviting yeah. them to that house gig. And She's a better promoter than I am. She gets more, more people to that gig than I get to many of our other gigs look, through the year. Maybe Mum needs to be your manager, Carmen. Could be your job for you. That's great. And you think, you know, the old school stuff, what putting up posters and on notice boards and that, you think there's still value in that? Yep, I think there's still great value in having good looking um, graphics associated yeah. with your stuff. <laughs> That's how you do it, folks. This is how you do it. I like to use um, the spaghettini for this one, which is sort of slimmer. Lovely. Good for kids. And if you're cooking for kids, I'm just in the habit of doing this now. Break it in half. So does Henry Break approve of half. this recipe, mate? Is he a fan? He is, although the amount of chilli I've put in here... He may be shy of it. He might be a bit shy of it. He's nine years old. He's starting to get his head around chilli, but like baby steps. Good spice. Yeah. In this family, he'll have trouble <laughs> Especially avoiding it for long. Especially if you do a lot of Italian food. And... I find that the South Italy, they use chilli. Up north, they don't want to know about it at all. Yeah, right. Interesting. But, I mean, Sicily blew, blew me away. Um, I didn't realise it was uh, ruled and administered by Arabs of which is that stripe, I'm not sure, until the 9th or 10th century. And then the Normans oh, conquered okay. it. But there's, you know, there's palm trees around and you get you know, fish stuffed with raisins and yeah, pine yeah. nuts and that kind of thing. There's a lot of North African Ooh. feel about Sicily. Yeah, that's nice. One good trick for tomato sauce, I reckon, because it's going to get a bit tomato in. But even though we haven't put any fresh tomatoes in there, which we might well. Some of put green beans in there as well. Cool. Just a teaspoon or two of sugar in the tomato sauce. Beautiful. It takes the acid kind of edge off it. it I'm sweet. not a food scientist, but yeah, it does seem to make it more pleasant. And that with the water? My mum reckons I've never seen a pasta recipe when you do that. <laughs> but again, it's just one of those things. I picked it up from some. No, I always you chuck sugar in. Sugar with beef is, is a nice thing as well. Something sweet with beef. The other thing I was going to do is Mexican beef. Yum. But a bit longer cook. Yeah, that gonna, that's episode. a sort of four hour cook. <laughs> but I'd throw some chocolate powder yeah. in the spice mix, spice rub with that as well. Ooh. Now, so this sauce, it's basically capers, olives, anchovies, yum, chili. Yum. So, 
a generous amount of capers. I just sort of look at it and scope out how many that's going to equate to to each. Yep. Helping. <laughs> <laughs> the, cape, the caper quota. <laughs> that's right. Now, you could do us a favour and sure, man. just get some olive flesh. I th I'm pretty sure I've got sure. seeded olives here. And if anybody knows a way to not <laughs> spill fucking anchovy oil, excuse my French, when dealing with a new container of anchovies, please mail in, let us know. I'm going to put about four or five whole anchovy fillets in that sauce. So my, my son learnt two things about this dish on the road. Well, he, I, I had some pickled anchovies for an entree at a certain point along the way and he thought it was the worst thing he'd ever had. <laughs> and so then if any, anything on a menu had anchovy written no. on it anywhere, he wasn't going anywhere near it. So I, I had to inform him that Dad's tuna pasta that he likes so yeah, much he's has been, plenty been, of anchovies in the sauce, which as a nine-year-old, you know, it's like you can't see them, they're not there. <laughs> so I had to assure him that, that they are... They'll disappear into that sauce. Yeah. It's a nice addition to things of this riching up. Gives it a bit of a bit of an extra salty taste too. Not the I mean with the with the capers and those marinated olives, it's gonna be pretty salty already. That's why the sugar helps out too. Um, you could garnish it with basil if they didn't have any basil left when I was at the supermarket this morning. So we're just going with continental cool. parsley, which is something I do just now, as is often that what as you're not anyway. Chasing, do yeah, you? yeah. For sure. Now it's just let that sauce reduce a bit. I think it's eight minutes, this little pasta, so it's probably not too far oh, away. Oh, great. So, Dave, is there anything you like to eat after a gig? Is there a particular food? Oh, man. It sucks, basically. <laughs> Being a musician, especially if you're on tour or something, or a few gigs in a weekend, <laughs> it's a good way to stay skinny. <laughs> get, get somewhere for sound check before sort of dinner time, fart around, yep. play your gig, pack up the car with your gear. Head home at midnight. Yep, there's not much open. There's not much open. Not much open. I used to um, stop in Surrey Hill. We used to have a gig when Mr. and Sunbird first started out. We had a Friday night acoustic thing we used to do at, um, uh, where's the pub? At the top of Broadway there. Oh. The Lansdowne. Yep. Uh, it's a venue again these days, I believe, which is great. Cool. But we'd work, work all week and then go from work to this gig six to nine on a Friday evening. With, um, acoustic sort of trio thing that we had going. Nice. And I'd stop past Surrey Hills um, and get a particular kebab from a particular place because they had the best garlic sauce in Sydney. Yeah. And I'd often wake up on my couch on Saturday morning. <laughs> 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 you know, still holding. That, that point in my life, I was working 40 hours a week as a teacher and doing three, sometimes four gigs a week too. And I was able to fall asleep in places that you shouldn't fall asleep. <laughs> grab up the, Wash my hands. So I just... Really good, careful segment. Frank Zappa had a routine about dad food. He used to come out, you know, he had a studio in his, at his house all his time. Come out of the studio at 1 a.m. or whatever and realised he, he was condemned to eat the dad food that might be left in the house. Or <laughs> whatever you could assemble from, this and might be offensive to some eyes, but. Is that more sugar? A bit more sugar. Just don't tell I've mom. slightly overdone the tomato paste. Dave, your secret's safe with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, let's just not let that pasta get too... It's a golden rule, got to feed the crew. <laughs> Can come again. The working people. <laughs> the big test. No, that was pretty good timing. <laughs> awesome. Well, we've got you... Yep, keep them working. After matter, just grate some, grate some parmesan. Beautiful. And rather than maybe chop it, just rip up a bit of parsley. Yep. For a few plates worth. Cool. You sure you don't want me to chop it? I don't mind. Well, they reckon you, you smash the herbs to death by chopping. Do you? Okay. So it's a chefy thing to do to just, to just tear them rip it up. roughly. Rip it up. If you even let people do that to plates. And I reckon just grate some parmesan. Yeah. On Skinny side. Always good to rinse your pasta nicely. Probably. Feels like a waste of water. And uh, in this climate, 
You might make an argument that it is, <laughs> but it won't be goopy that way. Man, that looks good. So I really forget, but the very last thing. Don't forget the tuna. Is the tuna? Yeah, you don't want to have it in the in the cook um, over the course of it because it'll just dry it out. Yep. I like the um, the tuna with the chili and chili in the oil. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm taking um, a chance. So I don't usually use that one with Henry either. So there's a couple of you know, quite fun moments waiting for people in that sauce now. <laughs> Those two dried red chilies will uh, cause a bit of an explosion. So I hope nobody's a chili wuss. Nope. Crew are tough. <laughs> you gotta be, you gotta be tough at cooking the beat. We're <laughs> <laughs> gonna have rock and roll cooking. Gotta rock and roll we're cooking. Have, yep. We're gonna have a tough All crew. About. And people who are watching can't see the crew. No, they can't. But they're, a, they're there. They're we're, a couple we're, of uh, scurvy looking dogs. <laughs> 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 they're naughty. <nodding. laughs> okay. Again, uh, uh, in some uh, schools of Italian cooking, par parmesan and seafood. Don't go anywhere near each other. Yep, okay. But we're Australian. We're Australian, just yeah. have a crack. Enjoy it. Oh, that smells good. We need, well, that's what we need. Prudinesca means, you know, it's saying pasta that stinks like a whore. <laughs> it's the translation. <laughs> that's right I on. didn't want to lead with that because it no. might sort of, you know, might not be. Uh... Mention that after we've eaten. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a reason that it, um, it has a pungent. There you go, folks. For all right, all the <laughs> Fantastic. I reckon self-administered parmesan. Beautiful, man. And uh, parsley. So thanks, yeah, Dave. That's eat. fantastic. Let's eat. Beautiful. Cheers.